Hello, welcome. We're gonna be talking about sharing the workload today as parents with Decoding Couples, Stacy and Rachel. So I'm so excited. We'll wait for them to pop on. Hello, Drea, hello, Decoding Couples. And let me, we're so excited to chat with you today. Hi, postpartum doula. Hello, oh, and Rachel. Hi. Uh, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Nice to nice to meet you guys. <laughs> yeah. So I'm so excited to be here with Stacy and Rachel today. Um, we're going to be chatting with you guys about how to share the workload as parents. You posted something about that last week that I loved, and um, in my question that wasn't even about our live, people were talking about that how to be more a team with their partner, especially right now. But all the stuff. I feel like applies past the pandemic as well. They're all great skills yeah. to have. Pandemic problems. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but before we jump into it, I just wanted to, um, I don't know, just hear a little bit more about your practice and, you know, get to know you guys a little bit first. Sure. Do you want to start? Um, um, yeah. I mean, so we both have individual private practices in Glendale. We both uh, specialize in couples. Um, but decoding couples really came out of this just kind of, need for uh, individuals who were open to therapy, like open to getting some kind of help for the relationship, but definitely not ready to, for whatever the reason, right? Okay. Partner, you aren't ready. It really doesn't matter. And so we found ourselves needing this in between. Like we were really struggling in our own relationship, in our own marriage. And we, when we leaned into each other, like we started talking about, because we share a suite together. And slowly we were just kind of like, hey, is this going on with you? What's going on with me? Like, is this going on with you? This is going on with me. And it so has to be going on with other people. <laughs> well, other people. And we know it is because we're couples therapists. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's not a lot of space to openly talk about yeah. a lot of the common problems that happen. So that's how it was born. So we were just like, this has to be a thing. And more people are probably needing this. And so that's how... Um, we did it. And now what, six months in, not even just not six even. months in yeah. here we are. Yeah. yeah. Well, yay. Um, I think for me, I'm, I'm a marriage and family therapist in Northern California. So we're pretty close. I went to school in LA too. Um, but I work in school-based mental health. And I think a big shift for me was really thinking about influencing the system and reaching kids, not through therapy, right? Because the goal of our program is that we'd have fewer individual referrals. Um, so I think it's sort of cool when you expand beyond your training, which is very much about the person in the room, the couple in the room, the family in the room, and think about different ways of reaching people. Um, and as we both know, getting couples in for therapy and getting families in for therapy are two of the trickiest things. That so are. if you can offer something for where clients are, um, mm -hmm besides like just a book or a podcast, but have that expertise. I love that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's a, that's the perfect way to say it. Yeah. Meet them where they're at. I think that's the core thing for all of us. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think what I was curious about with this pandemic is that, uh, you know, we're home more. We have, all of us are moms. I've got a daughter in um, distance learning. I know one of you has an older one and, um, I think, yeah. Um, and so we're doing more at home, right? So there is more work to be sort of divvied at. Um, but I think a lot of the stuff we talk about, like with the second shift, especially for moms, but that's changing. Yeah. Um, so maybe we call it the default parent. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of that's really intensified right now. And I think there's a lot of resentment around. We're both partners. Like yeah. <laughs> partners <laughs> not really seeing everything we're doing, right? Um, and just how to how to um, manage all of that. So I don't know about you, but in my friend circle, um, especially as therapists, a lot of us have more flexible jobs and we have younger kids. So we might be more of the default parent and that's how it is for me. Um, the partner like comes out of the work bedroom or workspace at five o'clock, you know? And you're like, how was your vacation? Um, yeah. And so I think there's just a lot of that, you know, energy right now. Right? Like you don't know like everything I'm doing right now. So I'm not sure where you want to start, but that was sort of what got me excited about talking to both of you today. Yeah. yeah. And I, oh, go, go yeah. for it, go for it, go for it. I think the, the reel that we did on over-functioning, yes. we've got so much feedback. Um, so what is over-functioning? Because I think that's kind of yeah. what we're starting to talk about. Yeah. Like, 
that super explicit. Yeah. So everyone in our audience can feel seen right now. Totally. Because that was what it was like, oh my God, yes, 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 yes. And I don't think people knew maybe the term to go with it. So mm -hmm. over functioning pre pandemic, post or during pandemic, whatever, is essentially when one partner of the relationship feels like they need to um, take on the physical yes. load, the mental load, the emotional load, the daily task, the chores to basically do, excuse yeah. me, do more in the relationship yeah. um, for numerous reasons. One, they feel like they'll do it better. Two, they yeah. don't feel like it's going to get done if they don't. Mm -hmm. um, three, their worth is tied up in it. So if I don't cook dinner and do the dishes and make sure the house is clean before we go to bed at night. Like, what does that mean about me as a partner? Yeah. Um, and how will that change the dynamic? And the problem with over-functioning is that um, the more you do it, your partner becomes accustomed to it and it becomes mm -hmm. a cycle where you can get stuck and over-functioners burn out. out. And it, it, yeah, it is a problem cycle that can be difficult to change once it goes on for too long. So that, yeah. <laughs> I think so. So, you know, I'm really into that book, um, Burnout by Amelia and Emily Nagowski. And they talk a lot about that. And I think, you know, just um, identifying as a woman, I think we're really socialized in that as well, right? Around the worth being tied to um, that more traditional role, even though we talk about all these different things. And that's the second shift, right? Is that women started to come into the workforce and have these really incredible careers, but also felt the need to do more of the, the household work after work and things like that. So in that book, they do talk about that burnout does tend to hit us a bit harder um, because of all these social expectations for us. Um, and I think that really resonated with people. Yeah. yeah. And I, we were talking about this before that I think obviously we're speaking from a more female experience, but mm -hmm. quarantine and, and COVID and the impact on having multiple partners work from home has also tapped into, I think, a lot of like inadequacy that an other partner or maybe more typically a male partner can feel um, because that hasn't been maybe their domain as much or now they are having extra roles that they necessarily weren't in before. And not even that is like, yes, it's a disproportionate negative, but it's also creating feelings for them, role shift in them that's adding to the dynamic of the relationship and how they parent. Mm -hmm. So like the over-functioning for them may look different, but I think it's also kind of a little more front and center now because mm -hmm. the load is shifting just because we're all stuck together. Mm -hmm. um, and so we were talking about how that inadequacy, those feelings, and if you're not good at talking about them, they're gonna spill out into how we are with our kiddos, how we are with our partner. Mm -hmm. Totally, and one person said too, I didn't know that was the term. So, um, but yeah. we're all, yeah. Yeah. All, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what were you going to say? That, so just to piggyback off of what Rachel just said of, of how um, male identified persons are, are also kind of feeling this. I think then if somebody is an over functioner and their partner uh, stereotypically male is like, oh my God, I'm doing so much more now because I'm home and seeing it. Oh. I think it's a really natural reaction for, um, the person who was over functioning before doing all of those roles to not receive it kindly. Um, you can just say for me to get triggered. You can just be, <laughs> yeah, for, for, okay, so for me in my relationship, my husband's like, oh my God, I've been doing dishes every day. Who do you think did them before? <laughs> ah, there wasn't a fairy. There was not a fairy. It was you know, right? Like that kind of thing. The baby did. You had a very advanced baby, right? Yes. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. But it creates that sense of harder. <laughs> Because it, it amplifies that resentment and then it's not it's not figuring out how to do it as a team. Everybody just has big feelings. Uh, yeah. I think that's the big one that comes up is resentment, right? Because I think that's sort of the one. Um, and I know we're going to talk about boundary setting today. That's towards the end of what we wanted to share. But um, it's not a bad thing. But being more tuned in, uh, I like to sort of see, like, where does my resentment start? And that's a guide for setting boundaries for me. And I don't always know what it is, but you're like, oh, that means something is off. Um, and so we wanted, I, I know you wanted to talk about, like, normalizing how burned out you might feel or resentful um, of your partner because the cycle sort of goes on longer and longer and you feel, you know, taken for granted. Absolutely. What you just said is really powerful. I'm sitting here going, I want to write that down. Where did your resentment start? When did it start? Around what? Like, 
when you think about how deep that goes or what area you feel at most palpable, wow, like you're onto something there. Like that's <laughs> really, because I think we don't have space to talk about that, right? In a daily grind, the go, go, go of everything mm -hmm. that's part of the functioner is taking a moment with your partner and talking about, hey, where did this start for you? Where did this resentment start for you? And then how does it manifest? How is that showing up in how we are with the kids? Like, how is that showing up in how we are with our jobs? Like, it's just, oof. I think it's a very grounding and a good place to start, although it's going to be a hard combo. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. to back further, role of overfunctioner is not just to say, I'm feeling this. How do I, how can I approach my partner? But saying, hold on, I'm feeling this. How do I even approach this with myself? What is this mm -hmm. mean to me? <laughs> I know. And the idea of slowing down <laughs> is super hard, hard. for overfunctioners because part yes. of the value is in doing. Yeah. So, slow myself yes. down to say, wait, this isn't working for me. What does that mean? Am I not a good, am I not a good wife? Am I not a good yes. mom? Am I not a good dad? My mom was able to juggle it, juggle it all. So, how come I can't? Right? And that can yeah. be say, never mind. No, we're good. Never mind. I'm just going to do it anyway. Yeah. And then, right. When that resentment flares up, we ignore it, keep going, keep going. All of a sudden, you know, we're just pissed at everyone. And <laughs> what? Yes. I mean, sometimes we feel angry um, and we don't have energy to do our daily stuff. So that yeah. resentment to that has to be the first step. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I mean, just, I think that all ties back a lot. I mean, for me, just in terms of how women were raised and working with female clients, in addition to myself, anger is one of the scariest ones. Um, and how often do we have clients that come in that say like, I don't, I don't get angry. And that's sort of been ingrained in them and reflected in them and their family system as something positive that they never get angry, but you know, it gets stuff somewhere. It will come out somewhere. And I think the reason I include and have loved like following you two, um, this emphasis on the parenting unit, whether you're co-parenting and not together or whether you're together in a romantic relationship, there's still a workload to be shared. And that, I think we talk so much around the interventions for parenting and for kids, which is awesome, but bigger picture, if we can impact that parental unit, the trickle down is so healthy for the kids and for you. Um, and I like sort of shifting away from always looking at what parenting tool am I using? and looking at taking care of yourself and taking care of your parenting partnership. I mean, you probably see that a lot, Christy, right? Like this, uh, this emphasis on like how to help, you know, what can we do with the kids behaviorally? Or like what, like, oh, I want them to do A, B, and C, and you can see the bit bigger picture and you're like, well, what about, what about the parental unit? Like what's going on with the family? Like you must see um, this almost kind of, I don't know if it's an, um, an over focus, but like fix my kid or like fix what's going on between my kids. And you're sitting there going, are you guys, <laughs> as they're like, right? they're like, like shooting, glares. we need a behavior chart. Like yeah. that's right. Well, the really cool thing about my job, and I used to be more like teen and adult focused, so I started working with the littles about four years ago, um, that really drew me to it is there was an emphasis on um, educator wellness, because we know teachers are helpers just like mental health therapists and nurses um, and often burn out and have compassion fatigue and an emphasis on parent wellness. And the whole idea, not that we always get to work on it, is to be preventative, right? And to take care of a healthier school system. Um, and that's what sold me, right? They're like, the healthier the adults are, the healthier our kids are. And I have like a big part of my job is supervising our training program for the individual therapy. But it's cool just talking to the staff and saying, our hope is we can do more groups, more workshops for parents, and that this list gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, and so, you know, there's a limit to what you can do in the school system, but I love that my job um, had that broader like wellness perspective versus just individual therapy for the kids. Yeah, 100%. Where do you typically suggest that parents start? Like, what is, you know what I mean? Like, say, okay, like, say with interventions, like tools. Yeah, like, say somebody watches this and they're like, oh, that is, that's We're over-functioning. Like, yeah. <laughs> what do we do? I do feel resentful. I do feel tired. Um, I see it in my kids. I see it yeah. in things. Where would you say someone should start? Well, and this is where I got to say, I'm very intentionally not a couples therapist. I did a little bit of it. I thought, <laughs> That's intense. And, um, you know, I would often see that therapists would charge a higher hourly rate for a couple session 
for the same 50 minutes. And I thought, well, you know, my 50 minutes is my 50 minutes. And I thought, I see why that's a little higher. I get it. Um, so there's a real energy. In them. I like family therapy, but for whatever reason, couples, I'm like, you know, it's not my gift. We all have our gifts, okay? So, <laughs> but where I start on like a basic level, <laughs> my two favorites are love languages and then Gottman. And, and so I think Gottman can be a bit overwhelming, right? The six hours a week to a healthier relationship. But the things I love about Gottman are, um, you know, don't wait for it to get better. Start adding to that emotional bank account. Do yeah. the date night once a week, even when you don't yeah. want to. And that can mean in COVID, it can mean the kids are in bed. <laughs> we're ordering like a fun DoorDash and we're watching a movie. It's not that exciting, but it's something. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing that I love is, I forget what they call it, it's the State of the Union. Yeah, but I posted about this, like, maybe in the pandemic, you don't want to talk to your partner for one hour a week about what's working and not working. But if you can just keep a list on your iPhone, and every Sunday night, you share five things you appreciated, and one request for the week, um, I think it trains your brain to look for what's working. And I think as much as there is a huge issue with over functioning, I do also think we don't see what our partner does all the time. There's so many invisible tasks, even for the person that's not over functioning that we just do as parents. And I think it feels really good for both people to be seen in that. Um, and the five love languages is hard because now the Bachelor franchise has taken that over. So it's a little bit like diminishes the validity for me, but I, I would, yeah. oh, they talk about the love languages and words of affirmation all the time. It's, it's a little difficult for me, but um, I love that because it's a quiz. There's no wrong answer, right? You go on, you take the quiz and actually acts of service I think this can really help. So as a therapist, I'm a words of affirmation person. Just tell me, tell me you see all these things. But if somebody is more an acts of service person, they might not need that. And so helping people understand that we communicate our love in different ways and that we may be missing these like really great attempts our partner's trying to give us is helpful. And then the fun thing about that is you can do it with the kids. So that's a nice intervention for me to share with my families because it also says, hey, get to know your kid and how they experience love too. And you can take that quiz from age five up you can also do it as a person not in a relationship to learn more about what you might want to be looking for. So those are the two things I usually start with for parents. Love that. How do we put that over function and then over functioning tools? Like I think Christy, you have a great foundation. Like that's a really great way to create space. Like especially mm -hmm. some of the tools you mentioned. And then how do we break it down and make it a little more specific to um, kind of the over functioning and and helping the the load feel a little more even right now. Yeah. Yeah, which I think is, yeah, how do you balance those roles at home and how do you decide who gets what? Rach and I were talking about this. I don't know. Have you heard of the book um, Fair Play? Mm -mm. Gosh, I'm blanking on the, it's Eden someone. Eden. We can drop it. Yeah, I'm yeah. blanking on the author. But there's this book that's really wonderful that, that is essentially all about um, dividing up roles and role and yeah. balance how and why it's becoming a bigger a bigger issue um and it talks a lot about that it's it, the focus doesn't have to be tit for tat right okay yes. i did the dishes so mm -hmm. you need laundry i Ugh. vacuumed so you need to mop or do you know what i mean like it's not about uh, what i've done and therefore what you yeah. need to do yeah. it talks about really looking at um what each of you value as partners because look if your partner does not give a care in the world about if there's dishes in the sink at night. Okay, you can ask and ask and ask and ask, but like if it doesn't resonate with them, then there's a really good chance they're not gonna do it. They'll do it because you asked them, but it's yeah. probably not gonna stick. But if they feel like, look, I really want our yard to look good. Um, Are you getting... just talking about my life to everybody? Shh. Okay, I wasn't gonna dispel sorry. <laughs> Uh, I like, I like it when our sidewalks are clean, picking up leaves, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't want to work outside. Okay. So if this matters to you, you focus on that and that's going to free up room yes. to do the dishes every night because that matters. Yeah. Right. So it's a little more value based versus just saying, I do five things. You need to do these five things. It really bothers me when the floors look this way. So I need your help in doing them. Right. Because yeah. I well, they'll do it if I ask them to do it. But after that, I have, have to, to ask. Uh -huh. I, like, I have to ask. But newsflash, if they don't already like doing it and it's only getting done because you're bringing it up, you are not going to wake up one day and if your partner hates 
doing the dishes, you're not going to wake up to an empty sink. And I think what you said, mm -hmm. talk about, a, you know, a tool, a realistic tool you can go and try right now. Talk about what you actually like to do or like you yeah. find a relief in, tolerate, yeah. and then right. what you don't like to do. And I, we were talking about even scaling it, like as you're having this conversation, one to five. For me, washing dishes is a um, total five on things that I can't stand doing, like <laughs> cannot stand. But all day long, I'll put dishes away. And I yeah. think really clear with your partner, like this is a five for me. I can't do it. I just, right my skin crawl or actually you know this is a one for me because it's soothing for me to clean up after dinner um that's a real conversation that you can have and then you're tangibly talking about the same kind of value that you were talking about yeah. you're talking about the same scale and then you can go if this is a three for you and a five for you i'll i'll take that yeah. right um, I'll even the load in real time yeah 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 getting away from the tip for tat going with value yeah, which takes sitting down and having that conversation, right? Yeah. Right, like break it down for yes. you and what you guys need to do, and yeah. starting values based. What do you guys think about the cataloging points of like who did what? Because I know from like a intellectual therapy perspective, it's not healthy. I do it all the time. Now, yeah. how that's developed for us is that we can joke about it, right? Like when we schedule our self-care time, it's like, oh, you want to play some golf? I'm racking up a lot of points today, right? So we have humor about it, but we have a really hard time getting away from it. So yeah. what would you recommend to people? I know we're not alone um, around sort of breaking away from like the tally of how awesome you are. And often in that tally, you have a really hard time putting points in for the other person because you see what you're doing when they're not around, folding the laundry or whatever it is. So what, if, what do you think about that? You know, mm -hmm. you actually have a really good answer for that in your ebook when you have a little section in there. Yeah. About yeah. You're, You're like, like I do. Your own <laughs> okay. So, one of the things that I think um, has a lot to do with when we're cataloging and we think that we're like, you know, not taking tally is we're, there's a lot of burnout going on, right? There's a yeah. lot, probably pretty low. So, I can agree to like, I'm going to scale, I'm going to use these tools. And then you go off to your day with your friend hiking. And I'm like, oh, that hike must have been really nice, like a mini vacation. Already, I'm taking away from the activity for my partner because I'm probably pretty burnt out. And my yeah. is probably pretty low. And it's quick to eat. It's, we're very quick to be like, but I just don't have the time. Like, right. I just don't have time to work out. And that which just reminded me of your ebook, Christy, because in there you have – self-care and then barriers to the self-care and why that's not a good excuse like here's how yeah. to get you saying you don't have enough time for self-care so to answer your question i think that is um part of why we kind of do that tip for tap the cataloging like taking uh, keeping score we are burnt out and tired and if we're over functioning we don't want to admit it but it is yeah being into our relationship yeah, yeah. Tip for tat scorekeeping, I think it's just the red flag to let me turn it on myself. What am yeah. I needing? Yeah. Why am I so angry that my partner actually took the time. Why am I so yeah. napped? Why are kids napped? You should be a therapist. Oh. Like, this is dick. <laughs> okay. This is dick. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. This is the weird part of like internet connections. I'm like, we would totally be friends if we lived in the same area. Um, <laughs> so, but that's a little creepy. Um, but I do think that goes back to the first thing we talked about when we were sort of emailing back and forth of just normalizing this experience that we can have all these pretty um, Instagram grids and reels and we can talk about it. But the fact is um, there are limitations to self-care right now, right? And what we talk about a lot is just what can we do right now? Because there's always things we can do. But in this situation, like most of us don't have reliable childcare. We haven't seen our babysitter since March. Um, so there's just things that can't happen. So I guess it sort of makes sense there. We want to be aware of this, but not really get down on ourselves if we see more of it, because this is just such a hard time for parents. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I think we just have to do what we can, which yes. is so hard. And I know that sounds so simple, but like, the basic stuff, like going for a walk by yourself, right? Like getting off our damn phones. I don't know like, what you're talking about. It's not, I yeah. don't feel guilty, right? But like, it's not recharging to this real, no. real, real, it's, right. over, 
working and is unproductive, right. right? There's a time and a place. And I think we have to respect ourselves enough to listen to it. Yep. Um, Even tagging out with your partner yeah. for 10 minutes, like you notice yourself becoming tense, whether it's interactions with your partner or interactions with the kids, that's mm -hmm. a really cool thing that while we're all stuck together, there's no shame in implementing. I'm right now parenting in a way I'm not proud of. I need 15 minutes. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with doing that. So you can show up 5% better. You're, yeah. you're not when you come back, but you're also tuning into your body and going, hey, I see you're stressed. Like that's a lot. And you don't have to keep like pushing through over functioning. You can say, I'm close to not being proud of like who I am and it just doesn't feel good. So I need a timeout. Like mommy needs a timeout. Yes. No, it's great modeling for our kids. And I love that you said, so you can come back and show up 5% better. It's like, thank you for setting that realistic expectation. Cause I do think for over functioners, you're like, okay, I did it. I asked for the break and I'm going to come back and I'm going to be Daniel Siegel and Janet Lansbury combined. <laughs> and it's going to be great. And then when it's not that, then it's like, you're beating yourself up more. So I love that sort of framework of um, you can take a break and you can come back and be completely imperfect, but you were a little bit more recharged and that's a win. Yeah. yeah. To kind of, um, so while we have like some of these tools, right, we're talking about how to tackle the overfunctioning. Stacy made a brilliant point Ooh, earlier. I love when I wrote it down on a post-it, so I <laughs> don't get crazy. Um, but she was saying we're implementing these tools, right? Like putting it out there, we're going to try all these things. And then over-functioners are pretty guilty of not giving their partner space to try it, to actually yeah. allow it to happen. I'm going to say, let's use the scale. I'm super excited. Look, here's my scale. And then you go and do the same thing you always do. And I'm right there to remind you that yeah. you did it wrong. You didn't do the thing. And so yeah. see, but like give them space to be different. Like yes. that's a huge component of all this. Yeah. And I think it's a, it's a huge um, driver of the anxiety of the overfunctioner. Yes. Okay. My partner said they were going to take out the trash, but the trash is full. Just going to do it myself. It's just, they yeah. play I don't want to ask him again. I'm just going to do it myself. Mm -hmm. And I think part of backing up is holding yourself accountable to yes. not do. Yep. And here's an unpopular thing to say, but I'm going to say it. Oh, this is going to be good. Oh, okay. All right. Functioner is the problem in that dynamic. <sighs> All right. I'm leaving. I'm too. Okay. Sure. Okay. So, uh, but here's, but here's my question. Cause I think we did talk about how the person who's not the over functioner gets used to what the person's doing. Right. But I think there's more to that, right? So it's always a dynamic. So yeah. beyond that, it's not just I'm used to it and it's great and everything's wonderful. If we make any change in a system, even if it's positive, we know there's resistance, even from ourselves. That's human. But what are some of the things that the person in the relationship with the overfunctioner struggles with? Can you um, share some of that? Because the overfunctioner is like, I'm nailing it. Our partner? The underfunctioner <laughs> or the, 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 the neutral functioner? Neutral functioner. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what do they struggle with? I well, think, okay. <laughs> Let well, me tip. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just sh okay. right. Like you think about your own relationship and you're like, what would they be struggling with? Nothing. They're fine. <laughs> um, Resting. No. I think there's a lot when, you know, Christy, you had a great point. Like when we change anything about the dynamic, like it even smaller positive, it changes the roles that partner our partners are chronically used to filling in. So if we're going to change it up, I think it's really common for them to not really know where their value is, like what they bring to the table, a per level of predictability that we know also makes us feel safe. And so if mm -hmm. I'm the more neutral party and all of a sudden I see um, kind of like my spouse or my partner doing something different, I'm going to probably wonder like, uh-oh, what's going on? Am I in trouble? What's wrong? What do I do now? Um, the predictability, I might not feel as confident in that inadequacy we were talking about earlier. It's really normal for that to spike up. And it's also really normal for them to go a little, um, not necessarily inward, like they need to be quiet, mm -hmm. but like they're feeling they can't share as more because you're changing up the dynamic. Like they're scared to go, yeah. Hey, what's going on here? Like they're probably actually just going to be like stepping away and not leaning in because yeah. you're changing as the over functioner kind of the boundaries around it, although not healthy boundaries, they're kind of right. there. 
Um, and yeah, I think that party can get really thrown off and it can trigger feelings of unsafety, whether we mean to or not. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I think that perfectly leads us into what are some of these conversation starters? Because I think it's important not just to listen to this and jump in and never take out the trash again and hope <laughs> that everybody understands what's happening. I think we need a conversation to create some of that safety um, and say, hey, these are things that are coming up for me. Here are some little ideas I have. Um, so how would you recommend starting that conversation? Yeah. You know, what's funny is what you just said, I would say is yeah. to not, wait, no, I was going to say to not do yeah. it. To no, say, no. here's ideas I have. No, that's how we're <laughs> functioning, right? Like you would say, <laughs> hey, this is how I'm uh, feeling. We need to figure we, it yes. out. You yeah. Can place of I. And okay, so all right, back it up. So I would say first place is, is over functioner is probably going to be the one that recognizes that something is wrong. And that's because they're going to be exhausted. They're going to start physically not feeling well. Um, motivation and concentration are going to be low. Um, you don't show up parenting in the way, like you're more irritable. You're snapping at your kids, like right. Right, something's off, right? Mm -hmm. I would say first step is that that person needs to take a step back and do kind of an inventory what isn't working for me, right? Because going to your partner and just saying like, everything is wrong or <laughs> it's not working, it's probably not gonna be super helpful. So overfunction needs to kind of like, like first step, like, hi, I'm Stacy, I'm an overfunctioner, and like figure it out, you know? <laughs> um, and then when you, when you bring it to your partner, we're making sure that we're starting this conversation not when, um, Dinner is an hour late and everybody's yeah. hungry. Um, the kids have been on one. Work yeah. has been stressful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Or that there's a dedicated, fantastic like time and environment to have this conversation. Kids aren't around, whatever it is. And then biggest thing coming from a place of I. Yeah. Right? This is what I'm experiencing. Yeah. I need a break. I'm realizing I'm doing too much. And then the key what can we do to fix what this? What can we do? Not like what yeah. can we do, what can we do? You yeah. don't Y and Z and I need you to do it more. Probably yeah. not gonna work. It's probably gonna make your person super defensive, right? Yeah. Um, but just putting out your feelings on the table and allowing your partner to step up, mm -hmm. right? To that gap that they haven't been functioning in to say, okay, how, what are we gonna do, right? Like, yeah. oh, well, I guarantee you they're gonna be like, I didn't know you felt that way. Because again, we get comfortable in our roles or like right. issue or, but I feel like I do do a lot, right? Yeah. Um, coming together as a team and then maybe using some of the things we talked about before. Okay, looking at values based, how do we, mm -hmm. how do we divide this up? Um, how do I take more of a break? Because that whatever. starter is what's right. really going to set it yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the other thing, and I'm seeing some people saying like, hand up, I've been there. So this is resonating with um, people. Um, that I'm thinking of for the, I guess, neutral or under-functioning partner, what you guys hit on in your reel is that it starts to um, mimic sort of a parent-child relationship when you're the Ooh. over-functioner. And I think for an over-functioner, that can be a great motivator, right? Like, I want a teammate. I want a partnership. How many times does the over-functioner complain that they're the mom in the relationship, but you're, you're creating that dynamic too? So I think that can be a motivator for the person that resonates with that. Like, I, I want this to be a romantic team. And... Um, Oh, the other thing that we talk about in friend circles too, people will be like, oh, you know, and it's often the man. And, you know, again, I don't have as many dude friends. Sorry. Um, he's like my third kid, you know, and you're like, oh, okay. You know, yeah. and that can be a really good time for you to say, hey, what, what am I needing? Um, I don't want a dynamic where I feel like, you know, the dad is this doofus third kid. I want a partner and I need to look at what I'm doing too, to help that happen. And, um, to do things differently, to allow my kids to have different experiences, that makes them more flexible. Everything doesn't have to be the exact same way. They have different experiences at school and with babysitters, and they can have a different and special relationship with the other parent. Yeah, and I think you just hit on something great. I think we're, um, I'll take some responsibility here in a little more stereotypical, for sure, with the ladies and gender. Um, I think we, in our friend circles especially, will joke about the the male partner being that way. Um, and it's actually like pretty masculating. Like it's not empowering a neutral or an under functioner to be, right. it, it reinforces the parent child dynamic. And so even um, maybe copying to that and when we're having some of these conversation starters and saying, I also acknowledge like that, that's not cool of me. So if I want you to feel like a, 
a teammate, we're doing the we focus in these conversations. Yeah. I also need to cut some of that out because don't get me wrong. I think you can joke and all that, but at some point that we're not probably transparent about with our partners, it starts to wear on us and we mm -hmm. start, it affects our self-esteem. So um, if we're going to want a more even dynamic, even the workload, less parent-child relationship, we also have to watch the language that we're even joking around with, with our partner and empower them. Again, not to say you can't mess around, I'm super sarcastic, it gets me in trouble all the time. But in if we're trying to implement change, we know that change creates change in the system and mm -hmm. that opens pockets of vulnerability and mistakes. And so if your partner's feeling a little vulnerable or raw and then you make fun of them at a socially distanced hangout, when you just talked about we teammate-ness, like yeah. that's for a while. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then how do we, once we've like opened up this conversation and you come up with something that you want to try, like I was saying, the natural pull is for the system to go back to how it was before. It's really, really strong. Okay. Um, so I know you both mentioned you wanted to talk a little bit about how you can work to hold some of those boundaries so that you can get used to a new um, dynamic in the relationship. Um, yeah. One of my favorite phrases around that is living through change takes time. Like change yes. takes time. And that has mm -hmm. to be like top of mind, like mantra through all of this, right? Yep. Like giving yourself, giving yourself a break, giving your partner the benefit of the doubt that if it doesn't happen the first time, that the doesn't, first five times. That doesn't yeah. mean that they you. And that doesn't mean that they're not, that trying. They're not trying. But when you acknowledge it, that doesn't mean that then you do it. Bam. Yeah. Okay, let's say that again. That, yes. Yes, it will be easier. Yes, it's easy to not remind your partner because there's resentment in reminding. But if you want lasting change, you have to give them the opportunity to be able to do it. So holding yourself accountable First. to give them time. Mm -hmm. um, figuring out what is the best way to remind your partner of yeah. the things you agreed on. Asking them how you want to check in about this behavior. I like that. Like, yeah. like the decision. Yes. Right. So it's not, I'm pretty sure the overfunctioner has great ideas around how to remind them. <laughs> but it's important to say, how would you like to be reminded? Yes. I love that. Such a good point. Having it come from your partner's mouth. Mm -hmm. So it's resonates with them because yeah. we all we all treat people how we like to be treated a lot of the times when yep. it comes to that but that if it doesn't work for them yeah if it doesn't resonate again you're just going to be falling on deaf ears right so yeah. when you have that initial conversation okay if this isn't done how would you like me to remind you mm -hmm. and then yeah. through with that and if you don't you got to take responsibility you snap at your person this didn't get done again or i can't believe i have to tell you you got to go back and say i'm really sorry i know that's what we didn't agree on um and i want to take ownership of yeah that. I'm right whatever whatever you want to say yeah um but so holding those boundaries giving it time coming up with the healthy appropriate ways to Checking remind you about it often yeah Checking in about it often and giving them praise when they do it reinforce mm -hmm. yes praise. like all of us like to feel good like acknowledgement i did this i really appreciate that thank yeah. you like that's a super a super awesome thing to give your partner as well i think the over functioner has to think about too how they want to be reminded yeah. Because if they go into automatic taking out the trash mode and the other person notices, um, giving them some language too around how you're going to receive those reminders is helpful as well. I think I'm going to have to rewatch this live and literally hold like, write some of it down. Um, because part of it. My kids are home. Hi, guys. Hey, hang out with Daddy for just a little bit more, all right? Done, guys. We're almost done. We promise. <laughs> um, but I think there's to put on while you're doing whatever you're doing today, and make a list of maybe some of the stuff that's worked for you. Out, but there's a lot here. So I mean, like, kudos, kudos to us three. Like, wow, like we covered a lot of ground today. <laughs> But, well, good. And then tell me a little bit more about, as we get ready to wrap up, like what kinds, is it more like through your newsletter or how do you try to, or is it more through the Instagram to connect and give those tools and um, what can people look for with both of you? Yeah. So as we are, as we are growing 
following. We have some really awesome stuff. So yes, we will be constantly and consistently posting on Instagram for, for tips and tricks. So follow us. But we also started um, a mailing list, which is our monthly virtual toolbox, which is there's freebies in there. There's different tips than what we post on Instagram. Um, books that we're reading are super helpful. It goes out once a month. So there's a link in our bio for that or our website. Um, and then I think the thing we're most excited about right now is in March. First time we're putting it out there. So we're giving wait, it say, wait, say that again. Sorry, cut out for a second. We have a, we have a workshop coming up. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Coming. So for the... For the couples that know something is not right, but again, they're not ready for the commitment of like of oh, couple therapy. Like this workshop is is for you. So, oh, awesome! So, you can do it from your sweat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you know, as therapists, in terms of making referrals, I've always heard that before. There's always one person often dragging the other person in. So this can be a good place to get more information, feel comfortable. I think you guys also talked about just how threatening sometimes the therapist language can be. So if people can um, get comfortable through reels and content and newsletters and a workshop, that might make them more comfortable eventually going in. Um, I don't know about you, but you know, my partner, he's not in mental health. And so um, I was joking with you on one of your posts, you know, there's certain phrases that they pick up on it. Like, Hold the space, huh? Treat yourself oh. like a dear friend. I'm like, yeah, you treat yourself like a dear friend. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, I think just to help people get used to that so it doesn't feel so intimidating is really great too. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. I think it's a win for all of us how we start this whole life. That's, that's, yeah. That's what's most important. Both sinks in and creates change. Like, yeah. Well, thank you so much. I really feel that we should wrap up because my kids are home and they are distracting me, even though they are adorable. Um, but I just loved following you and just seeing the content you put out. I'm so excited just to connect with you more and follow them. They're awesome. Um, and just thank you for your time today. I'm going to be excited to come through this. And you know I'm going to be coming up with some slides, putting together some things just to take out from this as well um, as the week goes on. Everyone can watch the full live on Christy at Parent Self Care. Yeah. Have and a great rest of your day. Okay. Check out Christy's ebook also. Yes, the ebook. Full of one. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate Bye. Stacey and Rachel. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining. <laughs>